You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, Eric Stromer. And uh, we're talking about how do you get rid of things that, you know, well, they might be hazardous. Things around your house from batteries to light bulbs to chemicals to stuff. How do you get rid of it? And then maybe the things you should not get rid of as we're um, turning a new leaf, getting ready for the new year, you know, sure. month by month, we're going to be organized. So household cleaners, you know, you've, we all have some chemicals around the house, whether it's a bleach or, you know, certain aerosols. Um, you know, bleach can be diluted and poured down the drain, but you're never supposed to mix that with other kinds of well, cleaners, right? Because right. of the reaction That's exactly right. and, and the fumes. Yeah, you don't just want to dump the stuff down the drain. Yeah, right, right. So the idea is if you have um, certain household chemicals, like let's say bleach, you can dilute that. That you can pour down the drain, but never mix that with ammonia or other acidic cleaners. And then other cleaners and polishes, you should be you know, using that completely, and then you allow that container to dry in the container before you put that in the trash. Did you know that? No, I, mean, it, I didn't. That's it isn't, actually good to know. Yeah, it isn't like you can just go ahead and put whatever household cleaner, polish or whatever, and it still has a little bit, a whisper of it. That's not safe uh, for the trash. Okay. What about printer ink cartridges? You know, Well, we, you know, you know, my um, uh, the place I get my stuff, I think it's an office depot, some right. office supply store. They, well, they, do it, they encourage you. They encourage you to bring this stuff in. They'll give you a little money off on your next purchase. Maybe 15 bucks or something. Yeah, I know. You know? Yeah. And, it's but, worth it. And the whole, by the way, the ink thing... I know. The printers are now like a dollar, but the I ink's know. like 400 bucks it's, every time. And you always run out when you well, need Well, and they treat you like a prisoner when you go I into know. the store. You can't just get it because apparently they're, you know, stolen all the time. So you've got to go and they're locked up in the back like it's this, you know, Usually it's the warden holy grail. lets me get to the <laughs> printer ink, yeah. But anyway, to cut down on waste, and you can reuse ink cartridges whenever you can. A lot of stores offer this refill, refill service. Did you know that? Instead of buying yeah, new, I've, I've heard, they'll yeah. refill the, the cartridge itself which is cheaper than buying a whole new one. Sure is. And then if that's not an option, you can try recycling a lot of charities and even national retailers, you know, like the office depots of the world, but a lot of charities will recycle the ink cartridges for you because there's incentives for them to get a little little money on the side, right? right? Yep. Now, what about paint thinner? Because I know with all the painting projects that you've done, turpentine, paint thinner, other solvents, I mean, we can use it a second time, right? Yeah, well, that's what, what people don't realize. You know, you... You use paint thinner for oil-based products. You'll see if it's been sitting overnight that the sludge, that yeah. the paint that you've removed, sinks to the bottom. Guess what? The stuff on top is still good. You can reuse it pretty much over and over again. I mean, ultimately, it will lose some of its strength. But you know what I often do is I'll just you know let the sludge settle and then pour the thinner into a fresh, clean bucket or a container or the original paint thinner container and just mm -hmm. reuse it that way. And then let that sludge dry, A, with either kitty litter or on newspaper and then you can throw that stuff in the trash and the and in times in terms of the solvents themselves do you recommend that maybe we take um some of them to the waste hazmat waste yeah center too? i would do that if, yeah. if if you've now gone through it and it's no yes. longer effective yes. Then yes yes you can go ahead and do that okay good yeah. good good now here's another idea over the Christmas season, did you get gift cards to, sure, yeah. let's say, Home Depot or Best Buy or fill in the Starbucks yep. or whatever, right? It's all the above, by the way. Did you know, I mean, I'm sure that I, we're not alone. We have a little thing in our office where we keep all of our plastic gift cards, um, you know, theater passes, whatever, so it's in one place. We still have some of these gift cards from a year ago Christmas that we haven't redeemed. Now, do, and you they, know what? do they expire? No, they don't expire. Okay. But it's all about they know, they. <laughs> According to researchers, they know that, you know, apparently studies showed that $750 million in gift cards went unredeemed last year. Now, some do. Some do expire. But many often don't. But the key is to find what you have and then do something with it, darn it. But what do you do? Let's say you got a card and you don't necessarily, you know, go to that XYZ store. You know what you can do? Mm. You can sell it. A lot of websites buy gift cards that are unused or even partially used. And one of the sites is called Gift Card Granny. And you go to the site, and now granted, you, know, you may not get the full face value for the card. But let's say that you never go to, 
whatever, Best Buy. Sure. Or you never go to Bed Bath & Beyond. I mean, you probably might still go there. But let's say it's a store where you just don't go. It might save you the gas and the time, and you might get up to 93% back of That's the value of the car. Gift card granny. Gift card granny. So just Google gift card granny, and that might save you time, and you'll get a little money back. Another thing is um, to trade it. There's a website called giftcardswapping.com. Okay, and what does that do? And basically, you mail in your unwanted gift card with a form indicating the gift cards that you would prefer. Oh, and they're like a matchmaking service. Yes, oh. and so the site takes, you know, takes care of the rest, matching you with another person who wants your card. I mean, there's a website for everything, right? Sure. And they help find, it is, it's matchmaking. Sure idea. Another person who wants your card, and then, you know, you get the, the new one back and done. Great. You could always re-gift it. You could always re-gift Well, that's a, a good idea, isn't it? I, yeah. I often do that. I, I'm not a champagne fan, so when I get Great. gifts of champagne, I re-gift it. Why not? Yeah. Especially if there's no expiration date, you know. Um, just, you know, before setting the card aside, be sure to record the name of the person who gave you the card. After all, you don't want to lose track of things and end up <laughs> giving the card back to the person who gave it to right, you. Right. <laughs> that would, ouch, that would kind of hurt. Um, or, you know, something that I like to do is, um, especially for people who are homeless, you know, walking around and you, you get to a stoplight, I'll frequently go and buy uh, in fact, this was someone on our Christmas uh, buying list. They wanted to do something to give back this year. They had a serious health issue that they overcame. And so th- what they wanted was Burger King or McDonald's gift cards. Huh. So And so we gave him a bunch, $50 worth in small increments, so that now every time he pulls up at a stoplight and there's some homeless person that he seems... He believes that they really are homeless and hungry, you know, and worthy of this. He can now give back and That's give them a good idea. Because, you know, you give meal. cash and a lot of folks who are mentally they ill might do will something just wrong. go buy the drugs. Exactly. Yeah. But now, you know, you're going to know that they're going to go and get a hamburger or something, right? By the way, Carl's Jr. is making the old grass-fed hormone antibiotic-free burger, first of its kind. I've, I know. I've not tried it yet. I can't wait. I, I know. Just, listen, if I were homeless, that's the one I'd want. <laughs> right? But by the way, you know, if the season of giving has an end date and it's not until it's, you know, Valentine's Day, there's still ample time to donate your gift card to someone you're in need as well as like let's say you know the sam's club gift card that you have it'd be welcome at a food bank you know or a certificate to a clothing shop would be well suited to a local shelter sure so it isn't maybe just the person who's on the street but you actually go to the facility uh, that's a good idea the charity of your choice and by the way there's also a great website called gift card giver and they pair unused or partially used gift cards with nonprofit groups Oh, that's really so, so that's that sweet. Yeah, yeah. So great. it's called gift card giver. Now let's talk about things you should never throw away. Do you have any of those big binder clips? I mean, you know, they have those big black, oh, the big squeezy ones. Yes. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you've ever had a fingertip caught in one of those suckers, you know, it kind of it. It, they're really strong, right? It's great for corralling cords. Have you ever, you know, you snap I, yeah, that? Yeah, I haven't. That's a good idea. Yeah. So you can hold, like, you know, home office cords, um, things like that. Those binder clips are a great solution for any household problem. You know, uh, they also, on their flat, on one side, they enable them to stand up with a degree of stability, and they really are great. So don't get rid of those. What about a minimalist wallet? Oh. Do you have any of those? No. So you can pinch some folded cash in a credit card in the clip. So now, using this clip, you've got an instant wallet. Oh, that's kind of cool, yeah. yeah. Money or, clip. Or even picture frames. You can drive some uh, nails into the wall and put these clip binders and oh, hold some of your, clip, like drip clip, dry, clip like your, your drip art. drying clothing, Great you know, take idea. two of them. Or how about this, to- toothpaste helper. Right. You basically keep um, your half-empty tube of toothpaste locked, oh. and you load it up by rolling Squeezes and clipping. The f- toothpaste to the front. That could cre- cure marriage ills. See? And then finally, you know, you corral the cable by uh, attaching some clips to the edge of your desk and hold the ends of the unused USB and the power and the audio cable. So again, this is magic. Don't get rid of binder clips because... I mean, now we've got at least five great ways. I love the idea of hanging art this yeah, way. Yeah, that's okay? a great idea. Now, another thing that you don't want to get rid of as you're downsizing things around your house, yeah. aluminum foil. Wow. Now, growing you know, up, by the way, yes? 
I just threw out a bunch of aluminum foil last night and thought, you know, this is such a waste. I, I wish I could do something with it. Don't, because, do you, you know, they sold, Reynolds sold its first aluminum foil back in 1947, right? And they, they first advertised it as the foil for a thousand and one kitchen miracles. But pot scrubber, you can ball it up and then use it as a way to remove baked on, caked on grime. Silver polisher, you submerge it into tarnished silver with a glass pan of boiling water lined with aluminum foil, and you add a little bit of salt. There's a chemical reaction. Grill tine cleaner. Wad it up in Love a ball it. and scrape it back and forth. Scissor sharpener. Yeah. And a no-fuss funnel. Like, where's a funnel when you need it? You form a cone out of a double layer of foil, and you're in business. I'll never throw it out again. Don't. Anyway, more ideas for you coming up. You're listening to Home Wizards, Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole. We love to improve your home and improve your life. So among the different drawers that we have in our house, Eric, uh, we have this one drawer where I put electronics. And you, mean, just, you mean old used ones that well, you no longer work? Or? Some some are um, like while they're waiting to be recycled, they're kind of in a holding bin. Okay. But others are like... For instance, I have a cas- old cassette player. Wow. <laughs> it's like a little handheld mini. I actually mini. found some old cassettes it's, I wanted to hear. Maybe a, I well, borrow it And someday. this is a voice activated. Like, remember, like, way back in the day where you wanted to do note, note to self? Instead of have, instead of having Siri yeah, say, help me with this, on, it was, it was like, you know, tape. note. And then you're know, like, well, you're driving around, note to self. Here's my big idea. I want to write a book about so-and-so, and I'm going to make a million dollars. Okay, right. over. You know, and then you had, I still have that. It was my dad's. And it was a teeny little voice activated cassette player and the cassettes are like maybe what like oh, two I inches in those. size yeah. anyway so we have too this bad drawer. it wasn't note to self get rid of many cassettes and invent digital yes and the big <laughs> world wide web <laughs> yeah. but al gore beat us to it that's right right <laughs> but anyway but in the world of high-tech gadgets you know um it's a short trip from the next best thing to a child's plaything: computers tv cell phones you know they fall out of fashion quickly uh, and of course you can recycle them, and you can find um, the EPA donation and recycling website. But by the way, you could also, there's a charitable organization called Cell Phones for Soldiers. Oh, that's a good idea. Isn't that great? And yeah. also Hope Phones. And these groups will take your old flip phone and put it in the hands of someone overseas who really will appreciate it. Or how about another cool group called Music and Memory? It's a group that gives old iPods and MP3 players to dementia patients. Oh, wow. It's called Music and Memory. So anyway, these are, we're just talking about, oh, by the way, that's Eric Stromer, and I'm Cindy Dole, and you're listening to Home Wizards, and we're talking about 10 things you should never just throw away because there's a better purpose, there's a better give back, there's a better something. So I love that idea. You know? Yeah, it's so much better than just, to, you know, you finally get frustrated, you open the drawer, you take it out and put it in the garbage, and that's it. Nothing good can come of it except it fills landfills, right? So what about wine? We love wine, and wine corks um, can make, I mean, there's a million things you can do with wine corks, so many great artsy um, DIY projects. The next time you pop open a nice, you know, Merlot. B- buttery Chardonnay. Or a buttery Chardonnay. Hold on to the cork. There was a point in time when I would put them in a Ziploc, and it, it was kind of like my memory, like, hey, we dinner here, and whatever the year was, and that right. was fun. Yeah. But you can take it to the next level. How about a simple bulletin board or cork board? You know, you just glue, you know, 100 or so corks. Yeah, and you can um, either put them on end or or on their sides cute. next to each other. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. That looks really cool, actually. I've, I've seen that done. And, and it's okay if some of them have like that kind of burgundy edging because that came from a red wine, yeah, right? And that's others right. are not. That's, that's and, cute. And, you know, boy, I'm seeing less and less corks. Well, that's true. I've been There's buying a cork some shortage. wines lately where, I, where I try to, I, I'm about to open it with a corkscrew and, yeah. and it's a twist off. I know, I know. How about uh, turning the, the wine corks into something as cool as a cork bath mat? You know, slicing up the corks like in half lengthwise and then a hot glue gun, you know, to a sheet of maybe shelf paper or something like that. You know, you, even in soundproofing, if you glued them all on the back wall, if you were in a little music room, or such, you know, I was I was looking at my my tray from Starbucks that you get your beverages in, and I, I was thinking if I had all the trays I've ever had in my life, we could replace the soundproofing stuff we already oh. have in our in our studio with those. Those would work, wouldn't they, engineer? They kind of cool, yeah. Right? And it's made fine. it's made out of basically packing materials, right? It's yeah, I think well, it's recycled or, cardboard, but oh. it, it's a it's the perfect thing to make uh-huh. a, a room sound dead in a music studio. That's that's kind of clever and, yeah. and creative, kind of artsy, right? Right. What about squeeze bottles? You know, let's say that you had 
uh, the squeeze bottle ketchup bottle. Did you know that you can now turn that empty ketchup bottle, once it's been cleaned out completely, and you can replace it with, let's say, pancake batter to squirt out perfectly. See, that is a great idea. Into little pancakes, you know what I mean? And, um, I mean, the idea is, again, you have to, like, again, completely, completely clean it out, but why not? I mean, chefs fill these squeeze bottles with olive oil and custom sauces and s- I, spicy you know condiments. What? Salad dressing, Thousand Island, you could do, you could actually leave a little of the ketchup in there, throw some sure. mayo, shake it up with a little water. Make your own custom sauce. There you go. Remember when we were doing our little GE video series? I mean, that's, they're all about using those handheld, squeezable those those are the best. Because you can really control as yeah, you're putting... Yeah, and you can really look fancy. When yeah. You, you know, you, you, you squeeze the olive oil and then you pull your arm away and keep the stream going and then come back in. Mm-hmm. Makes you look like a pro. Or how about turning, let's say, one of those squeeze bottles into your homemade magic shell ice cream topping, you know? What are you going to put? Fill in the bank. Or, or old honey bear bottles, you know. Sauces, you dips. Put, no, or put paint in there. If those cute little honey bears, well, now you put Jackson paint in Pollock. there. And now it's a kid's art table or go. even hand soap from a former mustard bottle. I mean, all these ideas. Why not, you, instead of turning into the plastic recycle bin, reuse it? I like it. You know? I like, I'm doing the pancake one. Very cute. Now, Good. what about those plastic grocery bags, you know, because now more and more communities, you know, we're being charged when you go to the grocery store if you don't bring your own bags with you, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, and by the way, did you know that out in the Pacific Ocean, there's an island of garbage twice the size of Texas? It's called That's the just unbelievable. It's sad. It's called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, and it's made of millions of tons of floating debris. So very, very sad. So when you have these single-use plastic grocery bags, right? Even like the produce plastic produce bags. You know, when you go like when I pick my produce, I don't. I just throw them in the gar- in the cart. Yeah, I don't. I, don't I mean, you have the zucchini. I just throw it in there, and then I put that in because I'm going to wash it when I get home. And you can't leave the stuff in the plastic at home anyway because well, it, it, it mushy. rots. Exactly. Yeah, it mushy, so yeah. now, I, I, literally, you're using that little plastic bag for maybe ten minutes, yeah. a half an hour of your life, yeah. and then it's going to go into into the waste, right? Well, so here's a solution. You can now turn uh, this plastic bag, right? You can make a comfy pillow for a pet. By stuffing the crumpled plastic bag inside an old pillowcase. Hey, that's so not a think bad about idea. that. Yeah. Wouldn't that Lay be Lay your cute? gentle your gentle canine head on this plastic See? plastic bag pillow. Or you could protect a fragile package by stuffing the box that's good. with plastic bags. How about using it as a glove? Oh, what do you mean? Like oh. if you're cleaning the toilet, you don't want to get the icky toilet business on your mm. hand. Just put your hand in the bag and use it as a makeshift glove. Good idea. Good idea. Or you can also turn it into reusable grocery totes. You know, if you had lo- you know loads and loads of old bags. So, uh, we have this one thing in our in our back back room. It's a like a dispenser, and you can find these at Bed Bath and Beyond other places. Where it's this little stainless steel thing that you is wall mounted, yeah. and it has this little slit. And so you ram these plastic bags in there, so that when the time comes, you can gradually. I mean, they're stored in there. It it's looks like a neat. Kleenex box exactly. dispenser. Exactly. Uh-huh. There you go. And you just grab it, and so now you're more incentivized to save them, and then you can easily grab them. Kind of genius. Now, I can't a, tell you how many times I've made a rain poncho out of a garbage bag. Very cute. You just cut the corners on, on the bag and then the poke your head through the middle. Very fashion forward. You know, yeah. you're, you're, you're dry as a bone. <laughs> what about eyeglasses? I know that we, well, we both wear glasses, and uh, used eyeglasses, by the way, can be recycled and actually given to people in developing countries who don't have any. So don't throw away your glasses. First and foremost, it's the Lions Clubs. They've they, been doing Boy, this. they do a lot for Such, vision, don't oh, they? they They are all over the world, and, you know, when you just go online, look up Lions Clubs International, and they're all about, you know, finding a cure for blindness, preventing um, eye issues, and they give out these old glasses to to people in need, right, all around the world. They have um, at least a dozen or so eyeglass recycling centers all over the world. There also is something called Eye News. It's a group that distributes used eyewear for the needy, and they'll take your sunglasses or, you know, those old metal eyewear that looks like you have bumblebees or something. Yeah, it's, right. not, it's not fashionable now, or even watches. And they'll, they'll give it to groups that can now raise money so that they can 
that they can survive. Great idea. Isn't that a great? Yeah. I mean, you probably have some of these things sitting you never, around. You never think about it, do you? What about old t-shirts? Oh, if boy. you have a favorite t-shirt, it's an old friend. Cotton t-shirts make the best rags. Yes. Or you could also, there's a great website called 50 Ways to Repurpose an Old Tea, and you can make things and have some fun. Anyway, check it out. You're listening to Home Wizards, where we love to improve your home and improve your life. Thanks for hanging out with us. Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole. Check us out at yourhomewizards.com. And until next time, remember this, the key is under the mat. I'll light the fire while you place the flowers in.